understood or heard be thine and not mine. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Finding a little bit of a head cold today, so pardon me if I'm a little bit raspy. <clears throat> Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Yes. That never gets old, does it? <clears throat> During my tenure in Anniston, I served as chaplain for the local drug court at the Calhoun County Courthouse. The experience yielded sobering insight into the drug culture of that region, one of the worst in our state. The epidemic of substance abuse in our country statistically translates especially in cross-sections of underprivileged, poor education, and the socially marginalized. Much of Calhoun County fits that description. At times, a sense of complete hopelessness was overwhelming for those of us soldiering in the battle against what seemed to be insurmountable odds. The opioid epidemic, at times, greater than our resources to fight. Monumental effort, efforts were offered with the realization, even expectation, of minimal result. I often fretted as to whether my own contribution had any positive effects at all, as was the case in more than one instance where those given to my direct care were found dead with needles still in their arms. Of course, the benefit may have, and hopefully so, been non-detectable at a surface level, the only level accessible much of the time as those shackled by addiction are often either unwilling to trust others enough to grant approach or so lost in their addict's mentality that they simply cannot care. The hope was that consistent, authentic presence might, might make a difference. Most likely not presently, but somewhere down the line. One measure in the war against this hopelessness is rehabilitation houses, also known as rehabs. In theory, they offer safe housing in a clean environment along with potential employment at local businesses with whom the rehabs have relationship. Oftentimes, rehab stints are court-mandated as a larger scope of treatment than incarceration that is seldom effective and exorbitantly expensive, a strain and stretch on an already overpopulated, understaffed, and poorly funded penal prison system. Many rehabs also offer recovery and self-improvement programs in an effort to holistically address the disease of drugs and alcohol, but also give equipping for those who wish to better their circumstances with assistance in attaining GEDs or personal and professional skill sets, everything from hygiene to vocational training. I wish I could told you that they were effective. I would be remiss if I suggested that all rehabs are successful. Most are not. Many are reduced to money-making stop gaps or crash sites, while others are often havens of the same influences that propagate the very addiction they supposedly oppose. The successful ones. The successful ones consistently share one trait, community. Whether it is faith-based or contrived family, creating a feeling of unity is essential in developing an awareness of a greater significance and belonging. These communities aren't fail-proof, but do garner greater allegiance to the cause of individual self in light of a larger body. 
During this next seven-week season, or this seven-week season leading up to Pentecost, I would like to suggest a theme of resurrection. Resurrection from and to. As we discussed last week, so often the focus of Easter is upon our salvation from our brokenness, justly so. But also, we are resurrected to something. In fact, we are resurrected to several somethings. This morning, the something is community. We see a description of the first Christian community in our readings from Acts chapter 4 this morning, which is actually a continuation of the depiction of community we find beginning in chapter 2 of the same book. In many ways, the remainder of Acts, really the entire New Testament, is instruction for Christian living, or how we're going to go about doing this thing called Christianity. It should be noted that the bulk of our Christian-specific scripture is devoted to what comes after conversion. The ratio is weighted that way for a reason. The main point of all this is not just getting saved to only pine away for our future habitations as if we're at some sort of port of call. Primarily, Christianity is about living for Christ in this life and community aids in that pursuit. In fact, the longer my tenure in the priesthood, the more I am convinced that the main reason for Christ's ecumenical institution was to create community. Let's dig a little bit deeper, starting with our reading from the epistle, the first epistle of John. Our author uses the term fellowship four times in about two verses to hammer home a point. It is very similar to the Greek term for community. Oftentimes, they are used interchangeably In the Greek, the thought is described as ekklesia, ekklesia, meaning a deep kindred bond, like a brotherhood between members of an organization, clan, or body. We're not talking about membership at the Y here or at the local country club and deeper ties than just collegiality that you might feel due to your profession or maybe a fan base. In Johannine thinking, this is the type of connection that occurs only through an affiliation with the Word and life, which was Christ. A connection also indicated, validated, through the forgiveness of our sins. You can see the equation here. Resurrected from our sins and into fellowship. This community created by Christ was established with specific expressions in mind. And here are a few for you to consider. First, we are raised into community for the purpose of advancing the kingdom of God. As it states in the back of your book of common prayer, page 855, which I'm sure you've all memorized, the mission of the church is for all members, not just clergy, as we pray and worship, proclaim Christ, and promote justice, love, and peace. But do we really need all of this infrastructure to do that? Maybe. Maybe not. Community has additional intention. Community offers us a place for for support and encouragement but also accountability, a word that we don't like as much in our American entitledness. Just ask Tom or Debbie or Shirley or Ray. They'll tell you. We in fellowship carry each other during our difficult times. It is the crux of Acts teaching, and it looks a whole lot more like Karl Marx than it does Bill Gates community, communion, 
communal. The table is a living symbol of our bondedness together. Yet the community is much more than just a charitable organization doling out handouts. We hold each other up, but we also hold each other in line, ensuring that the body's integrity, purpose, and health is maintained holistically in mind, body, and spirit. Next, community provides a place for personal purpose, growth, and application. Dear ones, you can be a Christian without being involved in a local church community, sure. But it will be tremendously difficult. Yes, community is to care for each other. However, it is more about finding a place where you might serve <clears throat> rather than looking for a place that will serve you. This is not a fast food drive through Community offers assistance in the identification and application of your spiritual gift set toward a specific purpose that you have within God's kingdom. We're going to talk more about spiritual gifts on Pentecost Sunday. Furthermore, God isn't just seeking free labor to do divine bidding. The point of your role in the kingdom is that you are unable to realize the satisfaction and fulfillment that your spirit desires otherwise. Now, you probably weren't listening, so if everybody could listen for just a second. If you don't hear anything else I say today, hear this. The point of your role in the kingdom is that you, quite simply, are unable to realize the satisfaction and fulfillment that your spirit desires otherwise. Hence the empty feeling and the staring at the ceiling and the wondering where do I fit in and what's my calling. Community is a place that helps us find it. What is everyone's favorite radio station? Well, it's WIIFM. What's in it for me? The what's in it for you is peace. Peace. That's what you want at night when your head hits the pillow. You want peace. Community can help you find that. It is only yielded truly by following God's will for your life. Frederick Beekner says that your life's calling is where the world's greatest need intersects your greatest desire. Where the world's greatest need intersects your greatest desire. You have that for a reason. That's your spot. That's where you fit in. Community offers avenues where that can be pursued. It is the priesthood of believers and an empowered laity that finds its purpose. And in doing so, the kingdom of God is advanced. Think about it. Finally, community, community offers becoming. You see, dear friends, while being fulfilled as we are fulfilling God's design and serving others as we are served, diligently pursuing Christ, crawling back into church after a week of exhausting diligence just to be nourished at the table, only to go back out there and do it all over again. This is where and how we become. It is an active journey, and it mostly occurs outside these four walls. If the majority of your Christian experience is pew warming or tucked inside your house somewhere, then you're probably missing the boat. Community is bigger than 786 Hughes Road. And in it, 
we become. Do you see now why Jesus breathed on them? He breathed on them today in our gospel lection. He breathed his peace on them in the form of the Holy Spirit. They were frightened, and with good reason, the Romans were very, very good at putting down insurrection. Would the next knock on the door be the knock of the soldiers coming to drag them up that same hill? But then something else happened. A bonding occurred. It was the solidification of their community and the affirmation of their call. It was Jesus, and they had also been resurrected. Resurrected into fellowship. 